What do hail, snow, and rain all have in common? Besides the obvious fact that they're forms of precipitation, they all form from unique processes involving cloud microphysics. The basic definition of cloud microphysics is the involvement of small-scale processes that lead to the formation of clouds and thus precipitation. And why it's important, it's one of those kind of funny things that you wouldn't think that microphysics would be important in clouds or whatever, but uh, it turns out they exert an enormous impact on the evolution and life cycles of storm systems. A good example of this is hail, as whenever the deep layer vertical wind shear, or how the magnitude of wind speeds change with height, forms in an environment conducive to severe thunderstorms, so can hail. And so when people see the report of hail, uh, and they see these pictures of hailstones that people put on social media that have all their like, lumps and lobes and spikes and all the rings, all of those sort of visual manifestations in that particle uh, are telling us something about its history and its growth in the cloud. However, there's still quite a bit of uncertainty in forecasting hail and understanding the different scenarios that lead to different hail sizes. Obviously, we know if there's going to be a severe storm, there's a good likelihood of hail. But then given that conditional threat of severe storms, how big is the hail going to be? Uh, there's no, no one can forecast that right now. And so we're trying to do a better job at really anticipating these really high-end events so that we can hopefully try to mitigate some of the losses that are being driven by the damage from hail. Similarly, microphysical processes also have a huge impact on forming snow crystals and their unique branches known as dendrites. Interestingly enough, even the smallest changes in snow formation can affect where snow ends up falling by as much as a few miles. Now we know that most sort of fluffy snow aggregates fall at say about a meter per second. Uh, whereas if they have a little bit of rinding, so if they fall through some super cool liquid cloud droplets and some of them stick to those little particles, they can fall a little bit faster. So let's say maybe like two or three meters per second. So if they're falling from a cloud base that's a kilometer off the ground or 1,000 meters off the ground, snowflake could take 1,000 seconds to fall, or maybe it only takes 300 seconds to fall. But if the winds are blowing at 10 or 15 meters per second, that, that can give you a, a several kilometer difference in where the particles end up falling. So um, those little tiny details can sometimes actually play a big role in, in ultimately the effects that are felt at the ground. In terms of rain formation, the two main microphysical processes that form these droplets are through condensation growth and collisional processes. Basically, rain droplets originate from particles in the air, and whenever the atmosphere is moist enough, water vapor collects to these particles. And then the collisional processes where they collide and merge together, uh, which we call coalescence, basically if you have two particles, you put them together, you have one particle that's much more massive or much heavier and it's going to fall faster. While these rain processes are known in the research community, detailed specifics of how rain forms from cloud droplets are still a bit unknown, similar to that of how snow forms from ice particles. Uh, obviously it snows all the time, so we know that. We see the snow uh, all the time, but the actual sort of detailed understanding of the processes that leads to that first initiation of ice in the cloud um, that's a really uh, hot area of research right now that a lot of people in the field are, are looking at. There are still limitations of understanding in the field of cloud microphysics, but the science community has the tools to continue to make progress. It's a nice time to be in this field because we have all these new tools like dual polarization radars, these advanced satellites um, that are going to help us and hopefully make some, some significant progress moving forward. Indeed. Cloud microphysics processes are small in scale, but their implications to weather and forecasting, climate, and research are big in scale. For Whether or Not, I'm Ryan DePhillips.